Hey Linus, have you enjoyed playing Horizon Zero Dawn? Are you going to play Forbidden West now that it's on PC? Yeah, I really enjoyed Zero Dawn. I picked it up because I needed something demanding to play on the Steam Deck while I reviewed it that felt like something that should have absolutely no right to run well on the Steam Deck. And other than some crashes and some chugging, particularly late game, uh, I enjoyed the heck out of it. I uh, Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought Aloy was just... An awesome character. She's cool, yeah. I like her. Without giving anything away because Forbidden West just came out, so people, if they haven't already, might be picking up Zero Dawn in order to play them back to back, and I respect that. I get it. Um, so without giving anything away, I thought that the story was just so much fun to uncover as you make your way through the game. Did you play it? Zero Dawn? Yeah. Uh, I tried and it wouldn't run on my computer at all. This was quite a while ago. I still want to play it some other time. But I haven't, I haven't like, I haven't played a single video game in the last week. Oh yeah, it's fantastic, you know, man! I've been gaming more than you lately. Yeah, dude. Okay, I'll I'll talk about this after. But uh, yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. I had not actually intended to play Forbidden West though. No. And it's not selling nearly as well as Zero Dawn did. And there's a there was number of tons of hype around Zero Dawn, and it was a fantastic game. I'm sad that the follow up wasn't maybe as good. Well, no, Forbidden West is supposed to be really good. Like that's not the issue. Was it just not talked about a lot or something? I've seen some speculation that um, part of why Zero Dawn got so much attention was it was one of the first big PlayStation exclusives to make its way to PC uh, with a good port, like an actually yeah. good port. Um, it was dude um, it's rated really well yeah yeah so i think that what i realized 93 percent positive on steam right now that's really good. i know i know i think that what i realized though when i tried to play tears of the kingdom was that i Same um, format. i i don't think i i don't think i i think i don't i don't need to play that game again right um i need a new world and I get it. She, she goes to a new world. But you can never have as much depth to the world building as you did in the first one. The first one is from... You've already established the machines, all that kind of stuff. From her childhood to her <laughs> adulthood. Um, and again, without too many spoilers, really exploring how... What happened? How did we get here? Um, I don't need to just like go meet new people and see new environments. And um, I do think that, I, like I said, one of the things I love so much about Zero Dawn is that I think Aloy is an outstanding uh, yeah. central character. She's just super, she's super cool. She's super relatable. Um, That's always a pretty big thing for me. Like the reason why I liked Assassin's Creed 2 and the follow-ups, Brotherhood and Ascension, is that Ezio is such a fantastic main character to be able to pilot. It's like actually a pretty big deal to like like the character that you're playing. Um, So that helps a lot. Dave Gurr on Twitch says, you're wrong. Forbidden West goes full desert, jungle, island, paradise. It does expand on the original in every way, but that's exactly it. I, I'm not interested. He's in not ex- looking for an expansion on an original. I just said, He's I don't just want to see new environments and meet new characters. Which is fine. That's a personal preference for yeah. him. It, it doesn't mean it's a bad game. Yeah. 93% of people sure, like it. Sure, it's a it. great game. It sounds like a fantastic game. But there's no such thing as wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, like I, I, it's just I, what, I, what I, I really wanted to love Tears of the Kingdom. And what I realized is I don't need to play that game some more. With uh, with a building mechanic and some new environments to explore, like I, yeah. Breath of the Wild was, if I'm being honest, probably my favorite game, but I just didn't need to play any more of it. I can feel that way sometimes, not yeah. all the time. I, I think like um, like going from Morrowind to Oblivion, I just wanted more Oblivion. Like Oblivion was great. I had no problem with that. But there are definitely some games like the Far Cry series. Oh my god. This is the same game for the eighteenth time. Like I don't, I don't need this again. Like, and it, and it kind of sucks because the it's not even the same game. It's worse. The gameplay is just the story is so. Uh, there's so many stupid little things to do. It. Oh man, I could talk about this forever. But um, like the the world building is fantastic. Some of the scenes in some of the new Far Cries are like this is a beautiful landscape that I don't care to explore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all right. And the thing is that there's there's so. Um... There's so many other options out there that I don't, and I I find precious little time to game typically. 
Yeah. Um, however, there has been an exception recently. I told you, I came home. I have. I've had no family for a week. Yeah. Um, and you know how I've talked. I've probably talked to you about how usually I'm pretty good at time zone adjustments. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm kind of the jet lag king in general, and we've both actually. Usually been pretty good at that. That's been necessary. Like we for sort of had to learn it early on. Yeah. A lot of our lives, guys. <laughs> like some of those trips we did were just like such short turnarounds. In the Japan just, trip will always be legendary for that. Oh man, we Very, were in the country for like thirty hours or something. Something like that. The I think the I think my most ridiculous one was uh, when um, David and I did Germany. Germany. I remember this in yeah. like. Less than 48, it was, I think it was under 48 hours doorstep to doorstep or something like that. I'd have to look up the travel logs. Maybe it wasn't quite that extreme, Crazy. but that included a full work day on the other side. Like it was absolutely nuts because, because we were working during their work day. So we were doing just wild stuff. Um, anyway, the point is that I'm usually pretty good at it and I can kind of plan things out and go, okay, yeah, here's how I'm going to get enough sleep that I can do a long go and then I can pass the F out at the right time and then wake up refreshed. Totally. So you also do some pre-preparation before the trip starts, just start shifting your sleep schedule. I don't have time for that. I've done it before. Typically. Yeah. I don't um, usually do it, but I've done it before. Okay. So on my way back from Japan, um, I was like, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, hang out for a little bit. I will, I, will, I will stay up for like three or four hours of the flight, and then I'm going to sleep this, the last half, and then uh, I'm going to get home. I'm going to make it through the whole day because I was landing in the morning, and then I'll go to bed early. I should be good. And so I fired up Dave the Diver. And then all of a sudden we landed in Vancouver. Yeah, I was just going to say. Have you played it at all? No, but oh, I saw so I saw good. you load it up on Steam. But somehow Steam like indicated to me that you were on a uh, handheld. Yeah, I was playing on the Ally. But I didn't I didn't I'm trying to remember how it even did that. And I didn't realize that Steam would indicate like what device the person was yeah, on. Yeah, that's weird. I'm surprised at that. But I knew you were on your Ally because of something Steam indicated to me. I don't oh. know how. Anyways, Weird. I saw you load up Dave the Diver, and I asked you like how it was, but you probably didn't see it because you were on. Because I was playing Dave the Diver. Yeah, but yeah, so it's that good. Nothing else exists when you're playing Dave the Diver. Wow. Okay. It's it's actually kind of mind blowing how much, um, just like they they kind of over. It's it's like Anno, where there's always four Something things you do. need to be doing right yeah, now. Yeah. Five. Six. Did you did you forget about two? Get get on it. Like like it's ah. <laughs> um and the and the fishing is just like it, it's way too satisfying. It's there are some. I'm fine. I'm probably about. Tw I've got about twelve hours in it, and I am finding some stuff is getting a little bit tedious. But I'm already starting to see hints that travel is going to get a little faster and stuff. And like the fishing for just like random fish for the restaurant is going to start to matter less and stuff like that. But they just they just keep unlocking new gameplay mechanics and new stuff to strive for. And you haven't even finished the last thing at all. And they're, they're throwing a new thing at you. And you're just like, oh, anyway, yeah, it's really good. Um, which you guys didn't need me to tell you because it's that's a that's claimed. A yeah, that's a very highly rated game. Yeah. Isn't it like not really indie or something like that? Like, I think so, Isn't yeah. the team behind Overwhelmingly it? Overwhelmingly positive with almost 90,000 reviews. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought this was like... Yeah, Nexon. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it has, it has like that super kind of fun, intimate indie vibe, but there is so much content and so many like there's entire games that have been built within the game like it clearly took a ton of work yeah um, that's awesome yeah really good that's great i did a i filmed a flow plane exclusive this week uh which is like i don't know what the heck to title it but it's um it's my starfield review where i talk about oh, starfield really? for i think it's like two sentences what how is that a video uh and i actually end up talking about like the gaming industry and like how everything oh. was going down for a long time but how i don't think it's like actually that 
bad because I think we're at this part of the curve. Ooh, inflection point. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, because indies have been actually pretty good for pretty much the whole time. Okay. There's been, you know, indie like uh, fantastic indies that have trickled through pretty much the whole time. But we're, I think my whole thing is about how I think o- certain old companies are dying. And we're seeing offshoots come out of those companies like, um, I don't want to spoil all of it, but yeah, I think it's actually pretty good. You should check it out. 